Hi, what's your name? Hi, my name is Ron Bombardier. And Ron, what's your company name? Company w is branded as Quantum Expanda Security Gates. We're slowly changing our name away from Expanda into the Quantum name, simply because it's more understandable. Well, there you go. I was just going to say, my <laughs> some of my audience might have a spelling issue, so spell it for me. Give me your website just to yeah. be sure. Our our website is Quantum Security Gates plural dot com. Where, where are you guys based out of? We're based out of Toronto, Ohio, and we have an office in Florida as well. But our warehouse and our manufacturing is mostly in South Africa and in Toronto. Oh, interesting. Toronto, Canada? Yes. Oh, I have come across the best companies here today that are from Canada. All the best companies come from mm. Canada. You know, my favorite show, I told this to the other guy, is that uh, how it works or what? It, how it. Oh, yeah, 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 sure. And those are all Canadian manufacturers. Yeah, they are. They have They're a huge all, base. Yeah, how, to, how to build a golf ball, how to, you know. Uh, it's fascinating. Very interesting. So it's weird how Security Guy Radio gravitates towards the Canadian manufacturers. Now, we're going to talk about gates, access control, I call it in my side of the business. I think this is an underestimated uh, part of the business. Physical barricades give you time. It's not about blocking the guy, because eventually he can get through the gate. But if it takes him 25 minutes to get through the gate, you can do something about it. And I was looking at some of your products, and on the show uh, on YouTube, I'll put up some pictures and stuff of some of these gates. These are some really fantastic uh, gates. I, I They're kind of different. They're accordion. They're, you know, look pretty... Resilient. Well, you, st you struck a resonant chord there, Chuck. Um, we do get a lot of customers that call us, or potential customers, asking, can you burglar-proof my store? Right. And I'm, brut I'm brutally honest with them. You cannot. You cannot. You Th cannot. That's the right answer. If they want to get in, they'll get in. What we try to achieve is deterrence, visual deterrence. There, there are other products in the marketplace that will keep thieves out, but you can't see them. Yeah. And the problem is, at night, these thieves are casing the stores, looking for a quick fix. How can I break in? I've got 90 seconds to get in, get out while the alarm is screaming. So what we do is by putting the visual deterrent of a, of a module on a window and a door, it just sends a clear message. We know you're a tough guy. We know you're a crook, but you're not coming through this easily. It's going to be messy. Yeah, I think this is uh, something that a lot of security designers, uh, they, un they, they underlook it. I mean, if you present what we call a hard target, uh, why do I want to go to your place with this accordion gate when I can go to 7-Eleven and there's nothing on the door? It's it's simple premise. And then lighting, of course, adds to that. You know? That's right. We uh, we actually run into scenarios where uh, the corporate mentality will be very often to get the return on investment. They'll want two or three break-ins before they'll do anything. Before really? They'll become, yes. Bec very few people are proactive. Most people are reactive. And we've proven to our customers that you just lost $15,000 worth of cell phones. Right. You could have gated your store for four thousand dollars. Like, show me the logic here. It's always a challenge in the security business to have this yeah balance between budget and value and all this kind of. We things. had Very one customer who was very good in sharing with us an ROI project they did, wherein they took a hundred stores before and after they gated them, and their losses went from in the millions down into the tens of thousands, most of which was attributable to drive-throughs, which nobody can stop except a major bollard project. Yeah, sure. Well, yeah. again, it still slows them down to a degree that it, hopefully it will. somebody responds. Yeah. You know, it's interesting you should say this thing about the budget. So uh, when I worked at uh, one of the studios, uh, you know, the CEO called down to my boss and said, uh, if I cut the guard force in half, can you guarantee I'll have no thefts? And I go, oh, no, <laughs> cut it in half. And guess what happened? Nothing. Nothing happened, right? This kind of thing is different. Uh, clearly, a small investment of a gate is going to prevent things more than a guard does. I hate to say it because I'm in the guard business, right? Yeah. But a physical barricade is a better investment, gives you more time to respond than putting a guard in your store or even a camera. Cameras, I think, except for very specific applications, are kind of useless. Oh, look, I got a picture of a guy stealing my laptop. Yeah, I know that because my laptop's gone. What you know, I hate to you know, know is don't let him in there. Well, sorry to cut you off. H how we address that, because we do get that comment from customers. Sure. We actually have people call us who are new to the trade. They, somebody's just bought their first liquor store. And they will call us and say, look, I don't know what to do. Should I buy cameras? Should I buy this? I say, you know what you should do? You should build layers. Layer. That's right, layers. You don't buy one product. Time barriers. You buy cameras. Have a camera there. It's a deterrent. And if you do get broken into, it's evidence. The insurance company and the police will like the not evidence. Not preventative. That is not preventative. It's not preventative. Nope. But it's there as, as an aftermath. However, the gates will be preventative. So you put the gates in as another layer. You build up your security in layers. Even on our website, on our blog, we've been very proactive in Give building our blog. Give me the website again. Give me the website name. 
Oh, quantumsecuritygates.com. Okay. Sorry, right. I forgot I'm on radio. I no. <laughs> <laughs> thought we were having a chat. Um, on our blog, and which people can subscribe to, we mentioned that there are tips that corporations may know about these tips because they're trained that way. Mom and pop stores, small corporations, small chains, things they don't think of. Make sure it's well lit outside the store. You know, it's, Protect I'm your employees at that, night. That you come across that because I've been in the corporate security and police work so long, to me that's just second nature, right? Yeah. And uh, that's a problem. Yeah, it is a problem. I would never we have guessed. We take it for granted. Yeah, I never would have guessed that a guy that's smart enough to start his own liquor store, and that takes some brains and initiative, right? Doesn't, doesn't think get about the security. Sec- doesn't get it. It's interesting. He'll put a garbage dumpster out back right. in front of his back door so that the cameras can't see the back door. And the lighting doesn't get to the back door. So the crook can hide between the dumpster and the back door all night with a hammer and a chisel and work on the hinges. You know what I came across a lot when I was a cop is that they... They never kept up the recording on the VCRs and things. You know? Oh, we have we've had we've had cases where they've called us and said uh, they broke into our store and we don't understand why. And we we go and look at the store and say, you see that camera? Yeah, one, it's not on, and two, it's pointing at the ground. <laughs> why? But it's still a hard sell. It for is. Gates. Do you think it's because the aesthetics that people think my store looks bad that way? Or what people is are worried about the fortress mentality. Okay. Now the way we've achieved beating that has been that expanded security gates or quantum security gates, because they're modular, we butt hinge them just like a door. Oh. So in the morning, when you want to leave your bedroom, you open the door and swing it open. Yeah. You do the same thing in the store. You open your store door, you open my gate, which is behind your store door, you not only swing it, but you compress it. It's like those little gates that people put in their house so the kids won't fall down oh, yeah. the stairs. I'm looking at the brochure, and, and you know what? They're you nice can see looking. The, yeah, They've you can see the colors. Pres- they're all powder-coated. Yeah. Beautiful looking product. You can get different colors if you want to match your store. We have four different standard colors. Oh, you got to get more. We have black. We have white. We have gray. We have high visibility safety yellow. Yes. And we will do custom. We've had customers. Yeah, you want to do custom. Yeah, we have customers who have uh, blue mullions in their store. All my framing in my store is blue, yeah. which is very bizarre. But they'll say, can you paint the gates blue? Yes, we can. That's very we've important. Pa- we have powder-coating contracts, and we'll do that. At, at Quantum Security Gates, we do a modular product, but we try to customize it to the customer. Okay. And the beauty of the beauty of the modular product is we can adapt it to virtually any situation. I literally can do planes, trains, and automobiles. I have put these in double-decker buses. Oh. I have put them on U.S. Navy ships. I have put these gates in elevators in condos. I've attached them. Residential stuff? Any residential applications? Pardon me? Residential applications. Yes, we have done. Uh, the biggest uh, use we get for residential are condos, where uh, exclusive condos, where you'll have only two or three u- condo units on a floor serviced by a private elevator. Oh. But they're worried someone's going to get in the elevator and get up to that floor. So we'll put a barrier gate across the elevator. Oh, interesting. Okay. So time, you see that in the old movies. The old movies, right. Yeah. Is it inside the elevator and, or outside? We, we do it outside. All right. In the hallway. And, and people like it. How do you get around fire codes for that kind of stuff? Because you're not supposed to use an elevator in a fire, so it doesn't matter? Yeah. Well, that's one thing. Usually when there's a fire and the alarm goes off, the elevator is cut out. Only the firemen can use right. them. And we also have uh, th- thumb turn technology in our gate. So you, one side will requ- require a key, but the other side doesn't require a key. You just turn a thumb turn so the the uh, tenant can get out. They can just go and t- turn the key. That would be a fire code in California. Turn, you have to yeah. Have that, yeah. Oh, in most places. Yeah. But it varies city to city, almost street to street. You never know what a fire marshal is going to determine is up to his code. Now, I'm looking at some of these. Uh, here's like an event application so it almost looks like a temporary fence you guys do uh, yes we, we like do that? a modular product we take again because our product's modular we take it and we mount it on what we call trolleys try to envision an upside down letter t capital letter t okay and the wheels are on the head of the t so we mount our modules to them and because they expand and contract you can roll them around uh, we just recently did the buffalo sabers hockey arena 134 foot long mobile trolley but it compresses down into small sections no oh, okay so that they can unlock it and roll it away and store it in the back room if they wish but when they need it when they're renting out the for an event not for a hockey game but for another event their problem is they don't want people accessing the private boxes so they bring these gates out and they roll them across they're not insurmountable they're only six and a half feet right. high they're very difficult to, difficult to climb mind you oh, because yeah, of the diamond pattern stabbed on the yeah you'll, you'll break your foot <laughs> yeah. however again it's that visual deterrence we use them a lot for access control in a similar vein in shopping centers where the theater is open at night but the stores aren't so they want people to be conduited down a hallway oh, to right. the theater to watch a movie yeah that says don't stop here don't close. stop here you yeah. can't go down this alley you're not supposed to be going down this you know to go to the Prada shop or go to Toys R Us so for my uh, my techie spec people uh, mm-hmm. what kind of uh, I don't know what the word is 
Is there a measurement of what kind of force these things withstand? Oh, uh, we always make a joke that they'll stop a 30-pound uh, turkey uh, flying out of a cannon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you say it, somebody will do it. So yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, there, there is no uh, empirical test because you never know what anybody's going to throw at a gate, um, and they're not meant to withstand. For instance, if somebody is really determined, they can try to drive a truck through them. Now, we've had a number of drive-ins over the years. We've been doing this for about 50 years worldwide. Uh, we have had people drive a truck to the front of a store, and the strange thing is because they are a diamond pattern, they're like a web, like a spider web. Yeah, I can see that. And very often, the gate, the framing of the store will break, the gate will go with the framing, and it'll stretch. It'll, it, it may destroy the gate, but the gate will not come apart. Oh, interesting. So it wraps around the front of the truck, and we have video proof, customers have sent it to us, of breaking artists standing there outside their truck, which is now, well, it's probably stolen. The front end is all broken. The axle of the truck is broken. The storefront is all over the place, glass everywhere, but they still haven't got in. Yeah, because the, the gates, gates are still, still in attached. front of them. Yeah. The gates just oh, stretch like a spider web and are still attached. So I'm thinking, uh, and I always, I always think weird stuff. <laughs> uh, any biometric uh, electronic versions of this where no, I can we, pop a gate with a thumb print and unlock it? No, because they're That's the next big because thing, the product know. I know, but yeah. the product is mechanical. So it has to open and close and it's a contracting and expanding. Right, but it does lock at some point, right? It, there's a lock point. Yes, we have um, the only product we do that is remotely lockable is our roll down shutters. They can be done with like a TV remote. And that's because they go up and down, up and down. They wrap around a coil. So you can you can motorize those things and you can put electronic locks on them. The other product, the problem with it is, how do you get it from when it's compressed? How do you make it span eight feet without touching it? You can't put a cylinder on it because a cylinder would have to stick out eight feet in order to have the well, travel. How do, how do these lock together then? They lock, well, the way we lock our gates, when they're, generally when they're a door gate, or if it's a more of a serious. I get a, I get a store, because they're kind of yeah. coming to, they're if you, going if, from left to right, and on, yeah. the, on the right, they lock right there, right? Yeah, okay. no, not necessarily. Oh, okay. If you're in a store, and let's, I'll give you a typical storefront, because not they're not all big stores. Let's say you have a mom and pop store, and you have two windows on the left, two windows on the right, and you have a set of double doors in the middle, 20 feet wide, typical store. People will call me and say, just what you said, can I put a gate in and stretch it across and lock it on the left-hand side? I go, no, for two reasons. One, a 20-foot gate would be way too heavy and oh, awkward yeah, of course, to, yeah. to maneuver. Sure. I said, the other thing is, you don't lock on the left-hand side. You're locking in the middle of that 20 feet. Right. You're locking at 10. So what you should do is you should put gates on the windows, which use a different locking technology. They use a very simple lock we call a slam lock. It's basically a heavy-duty brass body lock. The reason for that? windows are not a point of egress you don't come and go from your store through a window right so what you want to do is lock that window and when the bad guy approaches it from the outside he sees this nice clean looking gate but there's nothing he says if i break this glass i've got to work through broken glass which may cut my arm off to try to defeat this gate he'll abandon that yeah it's true he'll go over to the door now doors are tempered glass you s if you smack it hard enough the glass just fractures like your car windshield follows out as gravel now the gate's there. Now he can safely try to attack the gate. However, all stores, commercial buildings, all use what is called a hook latch. Looks like a big steel letter J that hooks in and locks one gate to the other or a single, a single door to its frame. So what we do is we replicate that. We have those same locks. We can actually key them alike to the front door of the oh, store. Okay. So you use one key, better, much better for key control. Right. But the big difference is when you lock your door in your house, you lock your store door, between the door and whatever it's locking to, whether it's another door or a door frame, you have a crack, a gap from top to bottom. Right. That's a pry place. Stick a screwdriver, a heavy duty, stick a pry bar in there. Oh, absolutely. Get some and leverage. snap the lock. Enough right. leverage will come off, right. So what we do is we build a male-female situation. We use an extruded aluminum channel where the male, which is the J-latch, goes into the female receiver, and there's a 360-degree wraparound. Now, careful. There's it's a family show. So I know. Get too I All know. right. Go ahead. All right. <laughs> <laughs> just there, teasing there's me. no place to stick a pry bar. That's the beauty okay. of it. All right. You, you so that's, is that unique in the business, this type of Yes, uh, it is. We, we yeah. are. You got a patent on it or anything? We, no, we don't have a. I don't. No, we don't have a patent. You can't really patent a lock. They've been around too long. Um, however, in our trade, we virtually have almost no competitors. Interesting. Um, because of and the way we've done that is by positioning ourselves to deal with the upper end of the trade. We deal more with um, 
the retail trade. That's a big part of our business. Right. Because that's that's the people who get broken into the most. Sure. I mean, we do have customers who have 3,000 stores. Nightly, there'll be five or six of them broken into. So we do a lot every of work with these people. Across your client base, every night somebody gets broken into. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's really tough. So How by many doing attempts with your gates happen, though? Pardon me? So when you say your clients have break-ins. Oh, how many attempts not, on our gates? Are these clients with the gates that have the attempt to break-ins? Well, they don't have all their stores done. I, oh, I have I, sign, right, right. I have clients that have 4,000 stores, but they've only gated 1,000. Okay, so what's the stats on stores that have your gates and attempted burglaries or actual penetration? It will happen. It's rare. Um, the biggest problem are people who are not professional thieves, uh, crack addicts. Crack addicts are not working with a full deck of cards. Right. So they'll try to break a window and get through and literally will find DNA evidence at the site. They'll cut themselves. They always cut themselves. Yeah. Yeah, they'll, they'll cut themselves on a glass. Um, but we have done stores uh, in the worst tenderloin districts of some uh, major cities across North America, uh, wherein they had break-ins. We had one which was um, an old video store, long out of business. That whole industry has died, unfortunately. Um, they were getting broken into monthly. They tried every product, roll down shutters, everything. I flew in there. It was a pilot project we did for them. I flew in there went to the store and the lady who ran the store asked me, what are you going to do? And I said, well, first, that piece of equipment you have outside your store, which is jammed, covered in graffiti, and you can't operate it anyways, and they keep breaking it. I said, I'm going to take that down and throw it away. I said, then I'm going to put my security gates inside your store and I'm going to stop them. She says, oh, please, give me a break. She says, inside the store, they're going to come. They're going to break my glass. They're going to blah, blah, blah. I said, no, they're not. I said, Marion, they're not going to touch your store. We put the gates in. This was probably 15 years ago. The store has never been touched. Interesting. All right. It's such a visual deterrent. It's, it's a hard target. It, it's, it I'm boggles gonna go, people's yeah, minds. I'm going to go next door, and it's a simple concept of hard targeting. Chuck, you just you just hit something. We have literally gone into strip malls where you have this store, that store, this store, that store. You know, ten stores in a row. Right. But they're all facing the street. It's not an inside mall. We'll go in and do a store, cellular store. We'll gate them up. He's been broken into, he's panicking, he calls us, we go in and we do the job. We do the job. At, at Quantum, we carry most of our product in stock. If we don't have it in stock, we can build it in a day or two. Okay, good. And get it shipped. I mean, shipping from the East Coast to California, five days. Right. We're there, we can get it installed. Installations, half a day if it's a big store. Um, we can do the installation or we can set you up to do your own. A lot of mom and pops like to do their own. Sure. Cost containment. Yeah. You know, there's a limit to how deep their pockets are. However, all that being said, We'll go in and do that cellular store. The crooks are coming back. Everybody knows. You were a cop. You know what it's like. Oh, yeah, yeah. Once they know you're vulnerable oh, and where they know where the product They're is. They're familiar with it. That's right. I know how to break in this store. That's right. They'll come back. They'll see my gates and go, darn. They'll go next door and they'll break into the pizza joint. Why? Why a pizza joint? Cash register. There could be change on the floor. Yeah, there's there's going to be something they can steal. And they're and there sell. and they're not going to waste a trip. That's right. So the pizza store will call me. We put, we put stuff on our gates so they can find us easily. <laughs> <laughs> you know, not everybody goes to the website, quantumsecuritygates.com. That's right. Some people will walk into a store. They'll walk into a rent-a-center store, look in a gate and go, oh, that's interesting. They'll find our QR code, which they can scan, or they'll find my name and phone number. Give us a call and say, can, can I buy those? Yes, you can. You can deal direct with me. You don't have to go to a reseller. And we'll go in and do it. And invariably, we'll have shopping centers. We'll, we'll end up doing. Eventually the whole strip mall. We yeah. may do the whole strip mall or yeah. 40, 50 percent of it. It's, it's amazing. Do you ever work with uh, construction contractors to put All the these time. in GCs. empty stores and as a, a, a rental incentive? We do have customers that are proactive. Um, and they will have us work first with their architect. Or architects will call us and spec a new project. Yeah, it's better to work with the architect because then you kind of build it into the design. And well, we can nice tell them what we need. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. See, see, our product is modular. Quantum security gates are a modular product. And by that, what I mean is it's, it's an add-on. You, you can go to an existing building, and we have enough knowledge, enough expertise. Um, our president, Nick, I call him Mr. Wizard. I mean, th <laughs> this guy literally has figured out ways to attach gates to things I said. You couldn't put a sticky note on that. I was going to ask you about retrofitting. It pretty, you can adapt it to any environment. To yourself. anything. Uh, we recently had a, a problem with a major, major retailer in Canada whose front doors on their flagship stores have no framing. Oh. Nothing but glass. Oh, glass. Oh, that's a Nothing challenge. Nothing but glass. Yeah. Where do you attach? You can't drill glass. No. Nope. You know, you'll compromise the glass. So we came up with a way, or Nick did, we came up with a way of putting the gates on a modular, uh, on a mobile trolley, excuse me, and then locking them to the floor. 
Very we good figured idea. out a way to lock yeah, them to the excellent. floor. Yeah, and well, and we'll, now the shopping. They wheel it in, so there's no aesthetic issue during the day. Exactly. They bring it out from the back. And, and it's safe. There's nothing left behind. Right. There's no hole on the floor because they sell feel. Right. So now we're doing a lot of shopping centers where they have a golden mile. They'll have a, you know, the Prada store and the Louis Vuitton. And, and, and they don't it's want all a, glass, right? nothing on the walls. Please do well, not they'll drive. drive. They need that. That looks just That's like right. that. So we're putting the gates in, again, to control you know, just to control the flow of traffic. Airports love them. I do a lot of work with uh, people like uh, the uh, the forces, Homeland Security, airport airport uh, security agencies to control certain parts of the airport. I will put gates in to keep people out of the server rooms. I'll put the, the quantum gates in to keep them from going down a bridgeway. You know, the plane is not there, but people wander. Call up O'Hare and tell him to put a gate <laughs> in, the, in the radar closet because the guy you heard about that. Yeah, right? the guy set fire to the radar. He yeah. just walks yeah. in there and lights on a rag and puts it on the on the uh, you know and, uh, the actually, connections it, and takes it, down the radar. It's, it, it's a sad issue, but one of the things we've learned over the years, uh, doing this for so many years, is that uh, I- internal internal theft or internal sabotage is a problem. I can't tell you how many it's restaurants. It's the biggest problem, by the way. A lot of restaurants call us and say, we're having problems with the staff stealing the liquor. Absolutely. So we'll put a gate across the liquor. Um, in schools, a lot of people in small businesses who have small computer servers uh, don't think about the heat and the buildup. So they'll take a broom closet, literally a broom closet, right. and say, well, we'll put the servers in there and they'll be safe. We'll close that, <laughs> we'll close that wooden door with the, with the little latch. Right. Well, of course, it gets broken into, or the computer over Overheats. It overheats, right. So we go in, take the door off, and put a gate on it. Yeah. Now you can see the computer, you got the, the air. flashing lights, yeah. you got the air, but nobody can touch the thing. So, yeah, at Quantum Security Gates, we pride ourselves on thinking, I mean, it's a hackneyed phrase now, thinking outside the box. Yeah. We try to think outside the window or outside the door <laughs> or, or whatever it happens to be. So, yeah, the product is, is very, very modular. This is a great, a great session. And, Thank you. Uh, I'll put this up on uh, YouTube and the website. Uh, give me your website one more time. It's quantumsecuritygates.com. Quantum is spelt as you would expect. Q-U-A-N-T-U-M. Security Gates, like Bill Gates, plural. We are a low-tech company dealing in a high-tech world. We're using 18th century technology, but we're stopping the bad guys. Excellent. Well, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks, I Chuck. It. I really appreciate it. All right, bye.